What's up guys? Today I'm going through a Raspberry Pi GPIO extension board, so let's go. Alright, now this board is quite simple and easy to use. Basically, instead of using the header pins off the Raspberry Pi, we're going to add this extension board onto it. Now, it's quite simple to install. You basically just pop it onto the top of those uh, GPIO pins. Now, just make sure you line them up. All the pins should uh, line up nice and easy. It does go from the start all the way to the end, so you can't mess that up. Now, like always, when you're putting those extension boards in, just be careful so that you don't bend any of the pins. Now, push it all the way down flush. Now, if you flip it around on the back, you can see it's quite close on the HDMI. Now, you can also add the 10 millimeter spaces to actually get a bit of distance in there. That way, any of the soldering on the back of the extension board doesn't touch uh, anywhere on the Raspberry Pi, especially on the HDMI port. So on the board now we have all of the breakout pins that you would normally have on your Raspberry Pi. And then we have those pins correlating out to these jumpers here on the board, which I'll show you how to set up in a moment. But then we have the wire terminals that each of those jumpers would go across to. So as you can see on the board, there's a label. So for example here, N. That N goes from the wire terminal across to where the jumpers are. And in this case, we have that PCM O right there where those jumpers are. Now the wire terminals are a push down to actually expose the hole for the wire to go into it. So you can use a flathead screwdriver or you can use your fingers if you are able to. You can push it down and then slot the cable into that hole and you can see there it holds onto it quite well. So therefore making the connection all the way back to the Raspberry Pi for that pin. Now the same thing in reverse, you push it down to actually pull the wire out and then you can move things around nice and easily. So it makes it a bit easier to add and remove wires as you go. So what you see here is I've got my multimeter connected up so you can see that the wire terminal and I've connected uh, into number D. Now that goes across to the clock pin. Now, as you can tell, it only lit up or sounded when I did it to the left-hand side of the jumper. And it's not actually showing here where the pins are that connect to the Raspberry Pi. Now that's because when you've connected up the correct wire and you want to use that pin, you want to put a jumper across the actual wire that you want to connect to the Raspberry Pi. So in this case, that D1. Now that I've done that, you can hear that it's going across the jumper. It's also going through to those other pins and also through to the Raspberry Pi. So that's how you make the connection on this board. Now, that way, if you wanted to disconnect something temporarily, you just have to pull the jumper out instead of having to fiddle around with wires. And you can just continue to do that with each of those jumpers and each of those wire terminals. The one thing I also wanted to show you is that it can also be used on an orange pie as well, not just the Raspberry Pi. It does line up exactly the same and all you have to do is the same setup, push it down and also have those standoff pins. Now, just bear in mind that the pin labeling is a little bit different on an orange pie compared to the Raspberry Pi. The voltage levels and the grounds and the 3.3 volt are all in the same place. It's just what you'll find is that pins are called differently. So instead of pin GPIO1, it could be labeled GPIO18 on the Raspberry Pi. So just take that into account uh, if you're going to use it on a orange Pi. That's about it for me. Hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure you like and subscribe so you can catch up to date with any other projects similar to this. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you next time.